this is bad for everybody. I do think it is worse for Democrats, in part because the House was able to act. And even though the Democrats would likely amend that, uh, that uh, House legislation, the House got something done, the Senate has not. Uh, and I think the Republicans are doing a pretty effective job of making sure that Americans know that Chuck Schumer is the guy standing in the way. Uh, it's got a long way to play out, but uh, that's how I see it at well, the Schumer's moment. Well, Schumer's in the in the Oval Office yeah. right now, but I but fundamentally which, I which agree actually with, raises the stakes for Democrats. Yes, if he uh, can't get a deal done. I think fundamentally you're right. Uh, in the past, the GOP has taken most of the quote blame for these government shutdowns. This mm -hmm. time. It looks like the Democrats are the ones who aren't going along. Alex, the passing of a federal budget is the most basic act of government of all. And yet, repeatedly, we seem unable to do it. And we do these things two weeks at a time, three weeks at a time, four weeks. Big deal. Why can't you get it going? What's the, what's the problem there, number one? And what do you think is going to happen? Are we probably looking at another two-week or three-week extension while they figure out DACA and CHIP and all the rest. Well, you know, now some lawmakers are even uh, proposing a one-day continuing resolution, a three-day continuing resolution, so it's getting a little bit ridiculous. There's a lot of frustration on Capitol Hill. Uh, Orrin Hatch, the longest-serving Republican senator of all time, he took the floor earlier today. He said, you know, we're the greatest country on earth, but sometimes uh, we're run by some pretty stupid people, and uh, that just shows the level of frustration why is it that we're in this situation again? I mean, this year isn't all that special. I mean, there, we've seen brinksmanship, last-minute CRs, omnibus bills at the last moment before Christmas, you know, the last several years. And what's the problem? I think there's a growing realization on Capitol Hill that the appropriations process, the spending process, is antiquated. The, the, the procedure calls for 12 regular spending bills to pass and then for, for there to be conferences between the Senate and the House. I mean, those are just antiquated procedures. And... Uh, David Perdue, a uh, former CEO of Reebok, he's a newly elected Republican. He's pushing budget reform. He thinks that there needs to be changes to how they do business up there. One proposal is to get the uh, to give the authorizing committees more power, to give the spending committees less power to enact policy on these spending bills. Mm -hmm. Really, what it comes down to is you have a non-fiscal issue, immigration, a policy issue being attached to a spending right. bill. That's what's causing the problem here. Yeah. Sarah, more broadly, uh, this shutdown showdown comes on the eve of uh, the president's, uh, the anniversary of his first year in office. Mm -hmm. um, if the Republicans don't fall in line, so to speak, and, and prevent the shutdown from happening, and it is the first government shutdown where uh, one party controls both uh, houses in mm -hmm. Congress, uh, then is that going to stall the momentum that the president might have otherwise had going to 2018 for the rest of the agenda items like infrastructure? I think it certainly makes it harder. I mean, anytime you have a logjam like this where emotions run higher than normal, you know, it has a dampening effect on the ability to, to get things done. And of course, uh, you know, they need 60 votes in the Senate to accomplish this. They've got to have a bipartisan solution. And one of the things that Chuck Schumer's thinking about as he's sitting in the White House is he has 10 Democrats up for election in November who were elected out of states Trump won, many states that Trump won by double digits. And, and I know many of those members, you know, places like North Dakota, Missouri, are, they don't want to take a vote where they are looked uh, at as shutting down the government over immigration. And so the politics work on both sides of this. Alex, do you find hope in the fact that the president uh, did invite, I presume, Chuck Schumer into the White House? I doubt that Senator Schumer simply showed up. I mean, the optics seem pretty good. Maybe not for the Republicans, though, because they're thinking, mm, is the president going to undercut us? Well, I mean, it's a good sign because it means that this is being kicked up to the executive level. And uh, what the what Senate Republican leader uh, Mitch McConnell has said all week is that, look, we're not going to put anything on the floor until it has the president sign off. The only way you can get the president to sign off on something is to have him sit down with a chief Democratic negotiator. That's Chuck Schumer. So if there's going to be a deal, this is how it works. This is how it happens. You get Schumer and Trump in a room together. And, you know, they, they can have good rapport when they're face to face. It's when they're in their separate offices and dealing with each other through the media. That's when things get uh, bad. Hey there. Thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be